wasn't in my head. I was thinking like, let's expect the Bodvar. Maybe I was thinking a little bit about Luna's doubles picks, but for now, the Taros, it's been looking good for Luna, of course. He's been taking names today, going through his teammate, going through some uh, top PR players like Snowy to get his spot here. And then on the other side, Jabba had to beat Snowy. Again, another top PR player to get to this fight. Now, Luna definitely does have actually a much deeper character pool in terms uh, that he can grab from than Java. It's mostly Bodvar, like, throughout the entire career for a player like Java. Meanwhile, Luna does have several other Hammer Legends. I'm looking at a Sentinel coming out. But today, it's been this exact setup. Seems like no skin swaps, no color swaps, no weapon swaps whatsoever. It's been this Gruagok, that skin on the Taros, been so successful today. I don't know if I see that changing whatsoever because when the chips are down and you're looking for something to take out your opponent when you need it, I'm looking at a Taros every time, but Java's looking at the Bodvar every time. Gets the first KO here, less than a minute in. Java has a nice little lead, but you see someone like in the later stages of orange, early stages of red, if there's another character on the screen that's not Taros, <laughs> the player might be in an okay spot, but when there's a Taros on the screen, doesn't look quite as good for someone in Java's place here. You can see Luna's really hungry for that KO though. You wouldn't see too many people willing to dash down there, trying to dip down, trying to find that final blow, but he knows a neutral light is gonna be enough to even it up. Again, that high strength on the Taros, on that Gruagok, and he's gonna be switching over to the Axe. It seems at the very least that both of them kind of have this clear uh, weapon preference. Java's been leaning into the hammer. Luna with the big oh, axe plays. Gets the four piece with a weapon toss as well. That's that extra one in the box. You asked for the three piece and the fourth one just came in. That's when you got the homie working that shift. Yeah. Oh, oh no, oh, no. Oh, Luna. Luna. <laughs> oh man. And then that's when your homie gets caught by the manager <laughs> yeah. and fired, bro. Fired. Oh no. No. You're not getting that fourth nuggy anytime oh, soon. No, that is heartbreaking for Luna. The game was even and just throws that stock away. He's looking for the big plays here with the gravity cancel neutral signature over the corner. That was an interesting stop pickup there. Didn't find the connection afterward. I wonder if that was supposed to be a down air or if he thought he was grounded and was hoping for the stop. I think he, he was going for the stomp, but he just didn't expect it to hit the way that it did. Still, he's going to find the evener. Despite the fact that Luna's like tripping over his own feet, he's still finding his way into the final stocks of Java here in game number one. So there's still that possibility that Luna's going to go up. But Java with the stomp cider puts him off stage. The weapon toss keeps the pressure on Luna. Can Java just clean up this stock? If he goes off stage, he's going to have to be careful because that D-Light ground pound, like, that's been the Luna special today. If you come to Luna's restaurant, that's what you're <laughs> going to be looking for. Even if it's not on the menu, that might be what you get. That's the secret menu item, but Java needs no secrets. These recoveries getting the damage built up, a side air to finish it off, and Java's going to take game number one. He was launched like a bullet off of that yeah. side air. Oh, goodness. He oh, that right just hurts to watch too. again. Yeah. Why'd you have to show uh, me that? I didn't want to see it. Uh, we should have put a warning up on screen. Viewer discretion advised. Yeah, that one, it's just painful to see a player fall, especially in tournament, because each stock is so valuable. Those stocks are worth gold. And to see it fall right there, it's a little bit heartbreaking. But still, you're seeing relatively even. Despite, again, Luna tripping over himself, he still kept it close. He didn't let it get to his head. I'm really going to need Java to start doing Bodvar's sword down signature. <laughs> I need him to do that as a diehard Bodvar player. I need him to do that. We've seen other Bodvar players really start to use that a lot more here recently. It's been very successful for them. We've seen a lot of Bodvar players using that, getting very deep in bracket, but it seems to be something that he just almost completely avoids most of the time. He's thrown out like maybe one or two today. I haven't watched every second of every piece of gameplay from him yet. Well, like I said, he's been leaning into the hammer a lot, right? Like he's been doing a lot of like very tricky stomp plays. When he's on the sword, uh, I saw him doing a lot of weapon tosses into like a pickup end light, pickup side light, things like that. He had that one side zig that was awesome off stage. But other than that, it's been a lot of hammer play coming out from Java. And of course, no surprise to see it happening more here in game number two. Now, I'm glad you bring up those weapon tosses because Java definitely is a weapon toss Wendy coming out here. 17 <laughs> throws last game compared to Luna's nine. Now, we've seen Luna throw actually quite a lot today in terms of those weapon tosses. I mean, that's a Taros player. You got the axe, you got the hammer. You should be throwing that weapon. 
big hitboxes on those tosses, and he's going to go for one of them. But Java keeping that dodge in check, make sure that he can get back to that wall safely. Do it to him. But either one of them he's has in. the KO tool. A stomp side air could do it for Luna. A downlight dare recovery could do it. He's do it not going to go for it. Oh, I should have done it, brother. You see how far back he's playing. He wants Luna to come up. D-light side air doesn't jump for it. Staying out there, and Luna still gets the touch. Jumping out the hammer in hand. Both players got hammers. Yo, that was Ooh, an interesting okay. choice to throw the weapon, land, go for the dash into the neutral heavy. Doesn't make a connection on that. Still does find the knockout blow. Luna jumping around using all of those iframes before getting anywhere near Java. Grabs the weapon spawn pretty quickly. Java's kind of running away here. Looking a little bit nervous, maybe hoping for another weapon spawn to grab a hammer. He wants that extra credit, man. He wants to extend this stock. So these little taps, these just tiny paper cuts onto Luna, they're still going to add up and eventually Luna is going to need a Band-Aid. He's going to need to finish the stock off of Java, but Java gets the wall touch. Luna waiting for the weapon spawn. It's going to be dead center, but the recovery is not enough. That was a nice Zeus throw that came out from Luna. Shouts out to the, all the boys in EU who have mastered the Zeus throw. Looking at you, Mr. Ninja. Yeah, that tech getting it just over the uh, the corner with those weapon tosses. But Luna able to steal out the next weapon spawn. Going to just play that denial game, stick with the axe again against Java. And uh, he's basically even this one up. Sidelight, should have DC. I want to see it. It's it's a playmaker, <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, I'm telling you. Oh, he went in with the ground pound. I think he ripped it maybe a little bit too late. So there's plenty of time for Luna to uh, really react to it, given how high he was when he actually let it rip. Okay, Luna. Getting the side oh, light side air throw, again. Yes, sir. Yeah, getting that angle perfectly over the corner. Java spending a lot of movement in the air and He's not going to wow. touch Luna. I'm going to need a replay. He, I'm going to need a replay. I on love that. the way he got close enough to Java to make him think. And Java, he, I mean, it's it's the pump fake. The fake him out, make him sweat, and then he falls to his death. But Java might be able to clean this up. Well, that's that's the thing. He's a hammer player. Once you make him think, you, they're done. <laughs> they're done, baby. Come on. You're a hammer player. Don't think, baby. Just swing. Well, he does find the swing with the recovery. Going to even up that stock count. Swing away like it's the end of science, and you got that baseball bat in your hand, all the cups of water around the house, and the alien is coming in. Yeah, I only know about the water stuff, right? Like they, they're allergic to water or something? Something like that, something weird. They're not hydro homies. Which is actually pretty whack. Yeah, kind of cr oh! oh! He's good, he's good. Oh, he's, he's not good! He's not! Java, gonna take game number two. 427 damage, I feel like Luna is just kind of giving Java some of these like really low damage yeah. games. Just really giving him that nice KO efficiency. Oh man, Luna, he tried to commit to that ground pound, right? Like you'll see a lot of people do it with, when they have a fast ground pound because it just gets them far enough away that they can get yep. out safely. Uh, but unfortunately, hammer ground pound is not faster than a sword ground pound. And Java uh, won the race there, got him on the back and Luna just didn't have the movement to get back up safely. Oh my goodness. Look, look, at, look at those like descending sized wedges. More than half of the game <laughs> was spent on that first stock. We're looking at that graph right now, that huge wedge. That was a long time that it took. That second stock kind of got deleted. We saw that in the replay. And that third stock he took next to no damage, but like same thing happened for Luna, except that was because he just ended up falling and was done after that ground pound. I think, was that in yellow? Yeah, it was. Uh, he was pretty undamaged yep. when that sword ground pound hit. It was. It was just enough to keep him from touching the wall. But we're gonna get right on into game number three, and it's so hard for me as a, as a Luna fan, as, as someone who wants to support Luna here, uh, because he's been so close. It was final stocks even, but he just he he loses these offstage engagements and loses stocks too early. We're gonna see how well it works out here in game number three, as of course no character swaps on either side. And that's, that's tough to see because Luna was winning offstage engagements earlier today. He was making plays on the edge. He thinks he can do that here, but then he's just running up against Java, who is just maybe more confident, better on the edge. So many situations where Java seems to come out on top in the long run, gets hit by a dare. Their weapon toss goes wide. Java actually dipped more towards Ooh. the stage. He's okay. still living. He's going to escape this edge guard situation, which is good because he's really far behind. Stomp Sarah from the wrong side of the stage means he's going to live at least a little bit longer. You don't see the immediate edge guard situation coming in from Luna. No Zeus throw. No going over for the straight down weapon toss. Nothing. Neutralite. 
Yeah, looks like Luna's playing this a little bit safer. You saw him uh, go for the edge guard, and the fact that he didn't get hard punished for it with the recovery. Oh, nice. Off the bounce, the dribble to himself, and Luna is going up big. This might be what he needs to take a game off of Java. He's sticking with a lot of hammer here, which is different than the previous games that we saw. He was mostly an Axe Andy, putting out most of his damage on that weapon. Like last game, he put out 316 damage on the Axe compared to 44 yeah. on the hammer. He hit like a Stomp Sayer and like one more thing on the hammer. But now that was kind of what brought him into the situation where he's at such a massive lead. He even threw the Axe away at one point, threw it into Java, then re-picked up the hammer. Ooh, but you see Java knowing that he needs an offstage engagement to potentially even this one up. You see him trying to play it out, and now Luna keeping him on the corner. Ooh, didn't bounce high enough, didn't have the damage, and a great read from Java on the jump from Luna will even up the stock count. There is going to be a weapon spawn on the field. Java has his choice of weapon. Juggling on the soft platform, he's going to stick with the sword here. Maybe both players are kind of leaning into their other weapon a little bit. Didn't get the follow-up. That was so close. It they was. were basically stacked. It would have been very dangerous. Of course, Luna not too damaged, but could have very easily led into like another down air or a, another ground pound potentially. And you see Java trying to utilize these soft platforms. He's had some really good dash cancels off these soft platforms. And now Luna struggling to find some footing here. Old move from Java to do the side light off of the stage. Kind of picked up the bottom side of it. It's not going to send your opponent very far whatsoever, especially when they're uh, extremely low damage. So you're going to hit him with that side light, and then you're just going to kind of also be there with them. Well, Java unfortunately couldn't maintain that edge guard. Luna does make the swap over to the hammer. Keep in mind, Java is up 2-0 in this set. You're tied dead even on their second stocks. Luna playing this a lot more slowly. Ooh, okay. Stomp Sider from middle of the stage, not quite to directly send into the blast zone. And he backs away. You see him not willing to push it. He's just going to play it safe, get the side air, and get the stock. Luna potentially about to take game number three. It's all about this extra credit. If he can get this extra credit here, he will be confident going into game number four. But Java, he's got the sword in hand. A D-Light recovery might not be enough with the high ceiling of Miami Dome. And it's not, you're exactly right. I'm loving the way Luna is playing this though. He's showing so much restraint at the last possible moment here in the game three when he's down 0-2. That's good adaptability. He was seeing his mistakes. He realized oh, his mistakes. Oh. How, did they Weapon just, was still alive. They just straight up swapped places. That looks so weird. Luna thanking his reaction time that he didn't pick up that weapon, but Jabba will still find the neutral air, and he's going to clean it up. It's now final stocks in game number three, and we've been here multiple times, and it all goes in favor of Jabba when they do. So now it's on Luna to change something up. He's going to be playing a little bit more hammer. He's playing it a little bit more safe but can he get this KO? Oh no. Uh oh, oh. edgeguard okay. situation. This hasn't been going well for Luna in the past. Java using a lot of his in-air movement options, getting back to the main platform. Now going in deep. Luna has the ax in hand. Man, he has not been able to convert those grounded D-lights several times. Picked that one up like all the way at the end, so he wasn't able to pick up the, uh, the D-light right after that grounded dare. I would love to see him go for some different options. Like, he can go for, like, jump ground pound reads or a down sig read. I'm not, I haven't been fully paying attention to how Java reacts out of it, but it might not even matter as Luna. Oh, Ooh, that Nair saved his you life. You heard that it. That Nair saved his life. Oh, the recovery off the top, and Java is going to take that one. 3-0. He's going to send Luna packing with a fourth place finish, which is nothing that Luna should be ashamed about no. whatsoever, but you know it's always tough. No matter where you end up in the bracket, any L, it hurts. Yeah. An, L, it an hurts. L hurts. Nobody wants to be an L nerd. No one wants to get ratioed. But Luna going from PR 28, seated in the 20s, to get fourth place at the Brohalla World Championship is not something to be disappointed in. Uh, of course, that does mean that Luna's run is done, but now Java is in the hot seat, going from Luna to Sandstorm for his next.